if this is like almost what three three fourths of a million year yeah. old volcano um more a ton more of the side of this volcano should actually be gone Hey guys, I'm with Bryn with Canyon Ministries. We're just south of the Grand Canyon at Leftover Remnant from a volcanic eruption. And now we're looking at some really interesting features. What are we looking at, Bryn? So this is actually the inside of a volcano that has blown out the side of it. Um, so this volcano is called a cinder cone where um, basically gas and volcanic magma erupt explosively out of the vent. And so it breaks up into these really tiny pieces. And the cool thing about this that we could actually walk inside of the volcano is that wow. eventually steam came up from underneath the volcano and was trapped by ash still falling. And so when the steam built up and up and up in pressure, it eventually exploded and blasted out actually the 750 foot wide chasm in the side of Red Mountain. So that is why it has this really interesting orange bumpy color is because mm. it was interacting with steam and the precipitates like calcite from steam the steam kind of cemented this lava together um, to make these really interesting hoodoos and then just erosion over time has caused um, the walkway the trailhead to be formed and the further like bumpiness of the volcanic ash and stuff so it's a really interesting and unique volcano in the san francisco volcano that's field. awesome that's so cool mm -hmm. and i tell you this is a beautiful place and it's so fun to climb i have a couple of people students climbing right now actually i don't think anyone's gotten hurt yet hopefully <laughs> and um so bren you've been with canyon ministries for a little while now is that right mm -hmm. Yeah, I started volunteering for Canyon Ministries back in 2018. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you just graduated with your degree in geology, is that I correct? I did, yeah, from Northern Arizona University. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So now we were talking about this volcanic eruption and Canyon Ministries, and you just came on staff giving tours, and you're giving a tour today, doing a great job. And, and we're looking at this erosion. Just earlier we were talking about secular geologists are dating this um, Pretty, pretty old, right? What's the date they're yeah, giving? Yeah, the date they're giving it is 740,000 years okay. old. Okay. Now, with just the erosion that you're looking at right now, do you mm -hmm. think that that date matches the, the amount of erosion we should expect? I would say no. I think that especially because most of this erosion is from the steam explosion, um, and if you just go up and touch it, you can tell mm -hmm. it just comes off with your fingers. You climb yeah. up it and you scrape off like a layer of it. Um, so it's a very actually um, what we would say malleable or mm. soft um, sediment. And so if this is like almost what three three fourths of a million year yeah. old volcano um more a ton more of the side of this volcano should actually be gone wow so we would say that it is probably more evidence to have happened or occurred after the flood which only occurred about four thousand years ago yeah so, so you just you mentioned a, a big trigger word with a lot of geology is the, <laughs> the flood and yeah. Now, we were we were visiting earlier, and I, and I hope we can hear some more of your story. Is, mm -hmm. um, you're a geologist, but you believe in the flood. And you, I do. But that's not necessarily what they taught you in many <laughs> um, many uh, schools, though, right? So, yeah. now, how, how did you navigate that? Like, have you always believed in the flood um, since you were young, or, or did something change your mind? Yeah. Yeah, I think like most Christians in growing up in the church, um, I knew about the flood, but I didn't really understand the scope of it or mm. the amount of catastrophe that it created in the world until I was about a freshman in high school when I um, stumbled upon Answers in Genesis research yeah. journal um, and did a research paper on the flood and That's why it was awesome. global um, and just kind of had that kind of background growing up and going into my college career and then um, when I moved here to Flagstaff, Arizona, I came into contact with Canyon Ministries, mm. um, went on one of their tours through uh, um, kind of like a church club, basically, yeah. and just really solidified a very detailed scientific yeah. Yeah. backup for this idea of a global flood and how it explains a lot of what we see today geologically. Praise God. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, I can say that firsthand, I can confirm that as well, is mm -hmm. I really struggled with understanding if there was a flood. And I came yeah. across a uh, geologist like Tim Clary and then Andrew mm -hmm. Snelling recently. And yep. and it really tied those pieces together. And I just came off of a river trip with Canyon Ministries. 
and myself That's and awesome. everyone else who was on that tour, mm -hmm. we were saying everything's tied together. We see how all of the rocks point to God and the glory of God, and yeah. it, it's 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 exciting. It really puts some some fire in your engine, if you will, for your faith. Yeah. Um, so so we're looking at things like volcanic eruptions. A lot of that was probably happening after the flood. Is that right? Yeah, I would say so, both during and after the flood. Okay, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And now it's so cool seeing how all of all of history and the rocks cry out, pointing to God and what mm -hmm. happened in this global catastrophic event. But as you said, a lot of um, a lot of churches don't even promote um, Genesis apologetics, if you will, or flood geology, and mm -hmm. um, maybe they don't even encourage questioning your faith. Did you find sure. that um, a case? Did did churches encourage questioning and and asking those deeper questions, or was it discouraged for you? Well, I definitely think it depends on the church, sure. but I think in general, westernized Christianity slow over like well, over time it has become frowned upon to ask questions mm. and to really question your faith and even doubt um, some of these things. And um, I would say that is actually the wrong approach. I think God says whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Mm. And I think Jesus actually wants us to ask these hard questions. Yeah. And God wants us to test him. He wants us to ask him because, yeah. you know, like Thomas, when he doubted, Jesus came to him and showed him the scars on his hands. It sure. was like, here is why you should believe. Um, I really think that... God doesn't say, no, don't doubt me. I think he wants us to ask questions because for me, what my experience has been is the more I have tested and asked God to prove himself to me, the more he has. Mm. And I do not think like my whole life is a testament to God yeah. has not disappointed me. There have been times where I have doubted and where it has seemed like hopeless. Um, even yeah. in the face of all the science, I go to, a, sure. I went to a public university really? okay. where they, you know, did not, they preach that creationism is not using the scientific method. Yeah. Which, that it's anti-science or something. Right. Um, yeah. which it's actually the opposite. It yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so just I think over and over again, what I would encourage people to do is do test it and look and research and deepen your faith because the amount, um, the depth of your heart and your mind that you give to God is the amount that he will fill it, I believe. Yeah, so. yeah amen. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote a, an article a little while ago that talks about doubting towards faith, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's seek, seeking answers and trusting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there are certainly mysteries of the faith and questions sure. we don't know totally. in the moment. Yeah. But I think there's a difference between doubt, seeking answers, and just unbelief, willful unbelief mm -hmm. in Scripture. It makes, yeah, seems to make true. that clear as yep. well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, this has been so encouraging. And I think it, it really pushes back against a lot of the narrative that I hear in, in a lot of the apologetics world. Mm -hmm. Apologetics just giving a, an answer or reason for the hope that you have coming yeah. from First Peter 3.15. Right. Mm -hmm. is a, a lot of times people say like biblical creation or flood geology is the reason people, students walk away from the faith. And, and it's kind of sad because... Um, we're saying the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually questioned my faith more when I was told Gen Genesis isn't true history mm -hmm. um, because you have death before the fall and and you have um, many, many parts in Scripture, Second Peter mm -hmm. 3, 5 through 6, talking about the denial of the flood, the willful rejection of it. Um, so that was a big piece for me. But I think really what you're showing is it's the surface level training in creation apologetics that is, is maybe the issue. But when you go dive sure. deeper deeper into the rocks, if you will, mm -hmm. you see that they point point to our creator and point to a, a true global catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. Now, is there is there one particular thing related to flood geology and closing here that you're like, oh, I, I just, I love this this part. Like for me, it's the folded layers. I love <laughs> seeing the folded layers. I don't know if there's something like that for you or... Sure. I think probably two main things I keep going back to. And the first is actually all the unconformities in the world. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So even specifically in the Grand Canyon, there's um, multiple unconformities yeah. in between each layer, which basically scientists call missing time, like huge millions of okay. years of missing time mm. where there should be lots of geological evidence of yeah. normal life events going on, normal geological events going on, and it's just gone wow. um, over and over and over and over again. And 
specifically the Great Unconformity, which yeah. has yeah, 1.2 billion years of t missing time. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> it is a huge problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, the only way to really explain these unconformities, which are these flat, crazy contact layers um, between sure. two very different geologic units, um, is either periods of no deposition, mm. which no, no new layers are coming no in. No new right. layers okay. are coming in, which basically excludes all of normal weather. Wow. It excludes normal deposition processes. It excludes like water eroding, carving canyons, or just causing like weathering features. Um, that does not make sense at all. Yeah. Or mass erosional events. Right. Like a flood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that puts that piece together exactly. nice and neatly. And so yeah. explaining it from a uniformitarianist perspective where these mass erosional events like a flood happened over and over and over and over again, yeah. it just doesn't add up. Sure. Like other than a worldwide flood that right. explains it perfectly that had all of the scientific and physical mechanisms to scrape off these layers. Yeah, and I and I tell you, I saw the great unconformity. Mm -hmm. It's real, it's not made up. Flood geologists aren't just making up science no, it's real. and um, I saw the the just a flat uh, planar um, lay between the layers mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's not that a massive amount of erosion that we should expect and we right. were we were just sitting there in the boat going Ooh, ah, and just looking around <laughs> um, we were it's just amazed cool. it looked like the canyon was laid down very rapidly yeah um, well guys I think anyone would be in for a treat to have a tour with Bryn in with in with Canyon Ministries and I know you're doing a lot of rim tours is that right mm -hmm. yeah I actually just started doing walking tours um, along the south rim of the Grand Canyon which is along the Trail of Time okay yeah so it's basically like the Grand Grand Canyon vertically they took a slab from each layer and oh, laid it down nice. horizontally yeah. so you get to kind of just walk back in That's time awesome. basically through these layers so right yeah neat. of course secular geologists say the deeper you go the deeper in time but mm -hmm. flood geologists would say lower you go is from creation rocks then to the beginning of the flood and the yep. progression of the flood as yeah, well so totally. yep. well I, I hope you guys will uh, um, book a tour with Canyon Ministries do a river tour do a rim tour with Bryn and I think you will be blessed and encouraged in your faith and really strengthened. And I know that's a big goal of this ministry. So I just want to really um, encourage you guys to check them out and um, see how the rocks cry out and how they point to God. So thanks again, Bryn, for coming yeah, on, on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much, Caleb. All right, it's good to have you. Bye. All right.